Let's jump into Google Forms Reboot, the new Google Form. Same thing, create form. And you're gonna see it looks similar, but it has a couple slight tweaks. By default, you can turn that on or off. It lets you choose which theme you want. So we could call it a tech moment. I do awesomeness. And the Argyle form, okay. I like that because I would often forget about themes and it used to be more annoying to get to. If you want a description to explain it, same thing as before. Uh, let's just get going. What is your name? That's always my first question. And I want that to be just text. Make that required. Done. Slightly different, we can add an item right here. And if we pull this drop down menu, you actually get to choose it before you go. So that's a much better workflow. What is your email address? And again, I want to make that required. One of the new things you get is that you can copy and paste cells, bulleted lists, or numbered or ordered lists. So here is just something I happen to pull up with some times from our EdCamp schedule. So I'm gonna copy that, Command-C or Control-C, come back to our form, and on option one, all I have to do is paste Command-V or Control-V, and bam, right, awesome awesomeness all of those choices are there so I could say um, yeah it can't needs to be shorter blah 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 uh, what time should we get rid of and they get to choose and say I think this one will make that required done the rest of these are pretty similar from before the big difference um, is with multiple choice you can copy and paste and just the way you can add the item. You've always had this confirmation, but it's been a little bit hidden. Again, people forget. So you could say, you know, thanks, and then direct them somewhere. Check out at techmoment.com now. I'm gonna show you what happens if I have all of these selected. A big difference is people can actually edit their responses after they've already submitted it, right? Super cool. If you want to see what this looks like as we're as we're doing it, you can view the live form again right there, and you can see as it happens. Really cool. You can open it in another tab or just keep clicking on it, and kind of going back and forth. When I click send form, we get a new display. We can invite people by email, so I can invite you know, Tim McKean or I can invite a Google group. The huge advantage of this is that all 10 of the people in that group get an email to fill out this form, which is super cool. Love the way this looks in Google Plus. So if you're using Google Plus, it's great. If not, you can just copy and paste the link. If you have a Google site, you can embed it, share it elsewhere if you want to collaborate with other people. So if Tim happened to be working right now with me, just like in Google Docs, I can now collaborate on a Google form, which is awesome. So we could be working together and you'd actually see him in real time. Another big, big difference is that you get to choose where this goes. By default, each form would be a spreadsheet. They, they were together, they were married, they were stuck together. Now, we can have it go into an existing spreadsheet. So you could have a form for each assignment or in your class or maybe even a separate form for each period of your students but all of that's gonna go into one spreadsheet for you, which makes life a lot easier. By default, it's gonna be one form, one spreadsheet. You can also have it be keep responses only in the form. Now, the only way that you're gonna be able to do that is if you come to responses and look at the summary. So I already did this. Here's a pre-filled one, similar to what I had before. Since I had chosen the response destination as being only in the forms, the only way I get to choose the responses now is to go to responses, summary. We had this before in the old forms, but now you can look at it only this way if you want. There are only two questions, so that's it. The last big difference, and this one is huge, is that you can actually have it be auto-filled for each of your students, each of your periods, each subject, 
Uh, if you're doing a conference, you want people to evaluate it, you can pre-fill it with a conference code. And there's so many different ways we can do it. It's now under responses pre-filled URL. This is going to blow your mind if you have not done this. So let's say I want Tim to fill this out. Tim at edtechmoment.com. And then all Tim needs to do is fill out the one question and click Submit. Now when I'm doing the pre-filled, I click Submit and it gives me a unique URL for Tim, then I can email this to Tim and say, every time you submit a form for my class, submit this form. And you can see this is what that looks like now. It autofills Tim and his email address. It's super cool. So check out the new forms, you're gonna love it.